Hey guys, Jim here and welcome in. It's been a while since I've had a chance to make any videos and I'm really happy to have some really amazing shit to share with you now. I, I'm actually backlogged. I have a lot of knife videos to do. Uh, the new series for Into the Light with the custom flashlights. I have a bunch to do there. So get used to hearing this voice because it's going to be lulling you to sleep quite often in the upcoming weeks. Right now we're going to focus on Koenig Knives. Mr. Bill Koenig and his brand new model called the Arius. As you see, I've got two here because one is never enough. And of course, you guys know I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so I had to get the Stormtrooper version as well. So let's start right now with the, I don't want to say basic, I don't want to say standard, but the more standardized version of the Arius. Now it's funny because Bill and I have been talking about this knife for uh, a year and he wanted to make mine a little bit special and it did one little slight little change on there and made it a little bit different and the next thing you know as soon as he starts showing that backspacer on Instagram everybody started pummeling him I want that on mine I want that on mine and uh, so mine was actually the first at least in concept and the first piece of Timascus that was bought for it but it's okay uh, one thing that I love to do is uh, share with my friends and I'm certainly getting the chance to with this. I dig it. I think it's an awesome knife. Um, I love the price point. Let's start there. For about 460 bucks, that seems to be the base price, up to about 500 you can get a lot of different options. And they're offering so many different ways to finish this knife. It's utterly unreal. And you could probably end up with a $1,000 areas just by requesting a few things. Oh, give me all Timascus and a, and a Sanmai blade and do this and do that. Bill will do pretty much anything on this series of knives. And I'm going to tell you right now, even if you buy the most basic version, you've got one hell of a knife. Now, the first thing I want to discuss before we even get into the specifications is the way this knife is shaped and contoured. If you look at the overall shape of this knife, you look at the really dramatic contouring that's been done on the frame. This is one of those knives that once you're carrying it, it almost disappears into your pocket. I have enjoyed carrying both of these so much because it's, it's always there. But you don't really sense it. You don't, there's, there's nothing in your mind telling you, I'm carrying a big knife. And it's not a tiny knife. It's overall, it's eight and a half inches when it's open. That's not a tiny knife. However, due to how slim it is, all the contouring, the shape of this handle, the way the blade drops into the frame, it's almost non-existent, especially up here at the top where it's clipped into your pocket. It's an exceptional design. I am so in love with this design. I can easily see myself owning four or five of these and running these through a constant rotation. But let me tell you other reasons I really, really love this knife. This dramatic top swedge, which is really, really deep. Look at how exaggerated that is. And then this right here. It's probably easier to show you when it's closed. Again, he went for serious drama in that design and it plays off perfectly. And yes, that is a thumb hole that you can use to open it, but why would you? It's a fucking flipper. Look at that. Just it's 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 such a bold and tough looking blade just by these two design elements right here. It's easy to see why I fell in love with this back when it was in concept stages and then got to see the work in progress pictures as it was being made. Check this out. Watch right there in the clip. How cool is that? I don't know if you really got to see that. I didn't have the light in there. But the notch cut out in the clip, he's also cut out 
in the frame. And it's really noticeable here. Come on, focus. How cool is that? The backspacer, no matter what material it happens to be made of, very cool. It's a partial backspacer, doesn't run all the way up the spine of the knife. Nice big cutout for a lanyard, cutout in the frame to expose that backspacer. So it acts as, as part of the frame when you're holding it. Genius. Beautiful. And there again you see that same kind of cutaway that you had up there in the blade. It may be a little more pronounced. Yeah, in the black. Look how cool that is. You got a three and a half inch blade, CTS XHP. And again, should you decide you want something more custom, say, hey, I want some S90V, I want some Almax, I want some Raindrop Damascus or Damasteel. Bill is going to make it happen because he's just that kind of cat. Really nice hollow ground drop point. Look how cool that looks in the black. Whew. Action is amazing. You've got ceramic bearings, ceramic detent ball. I mean, he really, he didn't spare any expense. If you look inside of here, we can get the lighting just right you'll see where you have the hardened steel insert on your lock bar. So now you have a steel on steel lock up that's not going to wear down and it's not going to stick. Every little thing that you would want is here present on this knife. Things that two years ago knife makers weren't even doing. Nobody was using, very few were using ceramic bearings and ceramic detents. That back then was really just for the art knife makers. Nobody was using hardened steel inserts two years ago. And when they started doing these things, they started upcharging. Guys, this is 460 bucks right here in front of you. Add in the cost of the Timascus backspacer, or add in the cost of all the Cerakote. And that's what this is. It's Cerakote over titanium and Cerakote over the steel. Now, how are these things coming to fruition? Because you're, you're Googling, you're going, Bill Koenig, Bill Koenig, uh, he's, not, he's not an ABS master smith, he's not in the, the Knife Makers Guild. I don't know who this guy is. He has teamed up with one of the most awesome knife making teams currently working in the industry, Millet Knives. What Millet is, very quickly and very basically, if, if you took uh, the Chris Reeves shop and stripped it of... 30% of its workforce and opened up a new shop, voila, you have millet knives. Because that's what it is. I don't know if it's you know 30%, but um, you know, the, the the founder Shane and his crew, they all came from Chris Reeve knives. They were trained in that facility. They've learned to use all of those machines. They've learned his attention to detail, his fit and finish, and his processes for the quality control and inspection. So what you've got is kind of a have gun will travel thing. They, you come up with a killer knife design and you contact Shane and say I want to make the most amazing knife possible. And it could be in any price range. It could be a you know, $300 knife, it could be a $5,000 knife. And you give him that prototype or you have them do the work on that and what you get is an amazing, flawless quality knife. Whether you want to do full production or if you want to do mid-tech or you just want to have them cut a few parts for you. That's what they do. And they take those years of precision and the training that was beaten into their head at Chris Reeve and they have created their own knife manufactory. It's cool as shit. And they're also really awesome guys over there, too. I've had a chance to meet them. Uh, super nice guys, and they know their shit. And they don't screw around. 
This is a very serious business for them because they realize that whatever they do, whether they get credit for it or not, um, they do make uh, one of the more popular tactical style knives right now um, that they get no credit for. It's, it's made as a private label for that company. Uh, and it's extremely popular. It's an amazing knife. I have reviewed it on my channel. That's not a really great hint because I have over 300 videos, but you could probably narrow it down at some point. They do incredible work. And they realize that no matter what, the client that's coming to them asking to make these knives, their name is going to be on the blade or the clip or on the frame. And their reputation is on the line. So they take their business very seriously and they, they put out an amazing product. And I can tell you right now, um, with the, the knife design swirling around in my head, uh, I'm very certain that when I'm able to pull the trigger on getting a uh, production run done, because guys, it ain't cheap, um, it's Millet that I'm going to go to. I, I have no one else in mind. It will be Millet. So look for that in the next 20 years. <laughs> so let's take a look now. Oh, let's finish up with this one. The finish work on this one. Uh, when Bill made one of his original prototypes, he did this really cool orange peel finish, which reminded me of the bolsters on my Frank Fisher battle. And I went, that's how I want mine. I, I want that finish. I think it's cool as hell. And Bill wanted to do some crazy shit. He wanted to do, he even wanted to try inlays and stuff like that. I'm like, no, there's something about this that's really, really cool. I love that finish. And, you know, then we talked about, uh, actually, he suggested uh, doing the Timascus Backspacer. And we probably talked about 10 different blades, from Damascus to mirror polish to this and that. And this was the blade that ended up being chosen, and it goes well with the finish of the frame. And it's a blade I'm not afraid to use. You've got a really clean look on this nice stone wash nice clean satin across the flats gives you a nice highlight so that you can see the swedge uh, and whatever you want to call that much more prominently and it's a knife that because of that finish I'm not afraid to use I'm not afraid to uh, to go hacking into shit as a matter of fact I got a crazy package from overseas yesterday I don't know if you, you guys ever buy shit from overseas or not um, but to get through customs, a lot of times they will take whatever's inside of the packaging and, and literally just tape the living shit out of it. And then they tape the living shit out of the outer box. I had to basically cut the box and its two inches of tape in half and, and, and hack through everything just to get to it. Uh, and this is the knife that happened to be sitting right next to me to grab. And uh, yeah, it's, it's done a fantastic job. I couldn't possibly be happier. And then, when it came to a slick version, I had to have the Stormtrooper. Now, again, they don't call it the Stormtrooper. They're not trying to step on anybody's uh, intellectual property or anything. But um, it's, it's kind of what everybody just calls it, because it's the black and white. And uh, it was either Bill or Shane that had posted up the first one they played with when they started playing with the Cerakote. And I went, oh, shit. And I texted Bill immediately. I'm like, I don't care what it costs. I don't care how long I have to wait. I need a Stormtrooper. It's bad as shit. I've got the LUDT Microtech in the Stormtrooper. I have the out the front Ultratech version. Uh, I, I the, even have the Siphon Pen in the Stormtrooper. I think it's cool as shit. So it, it made a lot of sense for me to have this. Already knowing that I was going to love the Arius as a model, I knew I had to have something special to go along with it. And there's something about seeing that blade in this black that makes it look just a little bit evil. I like the pivot design on this. Uh, you've got kind of a divot there, um, so it's not just a friggin' screw. You'll notice that it's got one flat side and it locks into a flat notch in the frame so that when you're tightening the pivot from this side, that side isn't turning. Nicely done. Very simple. Very easy. There again is that steel lock bar insert. The wonderful cutaway to the frame. The exposed backspacer. A little bit of jimping there. A little bit of jimping there. Perfect. Perfectly executed pocket clip. It looks fantastic. It's not a cheap spring clip. 
and it functions perfectly. It's not too tight to get in and out of your pants. It's easy to work with. It's just awesome, and it makes the knife sit perfectly in the pocket. It's not a stupid-ass deep carry pocket clip where you can't get a hold of your damn knife, but it's not sticking up three inches out of your pocket either. We also have a channel here for follow-through for your flipper finger. You're not just hitting a uh, rough corner of titanium. just glides right through. And both of these have incredible actions. Just super snappy. Easy to flip open. I only have like one gripe, and it's just in, in the finish. And I don't know if it's something that I'm doing. Um, but you'll notice how this one kind of looks dirty. See that? I have cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. When it arrived, it didn't look like that. So I, I don't know what the hell I've done, but I can't clean it for shit. Doesn't matter because again, this is this is a workhorse knife. Um, but still, when I show it to people and they're gawking over the knife, I don't want them to go, "Oh, why does it look all dirty and oily?" I don't know what's going on there. I've used EDCI solution. I've used Windex, uh, and I, I can't get it out of that finish. I don't know what it is. And just on this one, the uh, the tip of the blade on the uh, the Cerakote, not really sure what happened there. Uh, so it's got like these little little marks. But that's really it. As far as the, the fit and finish otherwise, fantastic. The build quality, amazing. The action is incredible. The fit in the hand. Huge relief here. Huge choil here. Then it tapers down, tapers down, and then you have a big relief here. So what you've got is a knife that actually feels skinny in the hand where you want it to and fills up the hand where you want it to. It feels more compact than it is. It's utterly fantastic. I don't care what handhold you use, it feels great. So, Bill, I, I, I got to commend you. Amazing design. I can't wait to see what you're going to follow this up with. Um, it's awesome. It's badass. I love carrying it. I love playing with it. I love holding it. So, yeah. Um, again, guys, I'm, you're going to see more. I, I don't know if I'm going to do more videos on them, but at least on my Instagram, I think you're going to see more areas or airy eye. I think that's the proper way to pluralize it. Uh, more of them uh, in my collection because it's just, it's so cool. And there are so many different things that you can do. And I'm kind of thinking about doing like a nice bolstered version, maybe some uh, blackwood carbon fiber bolstered, maybe with some Timascus. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll just get fucking crazy with it. Anyway, I'm out of here for now. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you as always for watching.